So which of these five different dividend aristocrats performs the best? Is it Walgreen Boots Alliance, Kimberly Clark Corporation, the Coca-Cola Company, the Clorox Company, or PepsiCo? What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor Channel. My name is Joe, and in this video we are extending out our massive dividend aristocrat spreadsheet with five new companies. We're gonna see which of these five companies performs the best over two different time periods, back 33 years and then back 11 years. With each of those time frames, we're gonna use four different investing strategies to see how these different companies perform. We're then gonna incorporate these five dividend aristocrats into the other 11 we've already started a massive spreadsheet for. And then of course, after we look at how these different dividend stocks have performed historically, we're going to look at their current dividend metrics to see if these five companies, if any of them, should warrant a position in our portfolio right now. You guys know I always want to deliver massive value with every video that I put out to you guys. So if you find some value out of this video, if you learn something new, if it helps further your dividend stock portfolio, then hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. Hey guys, Joe here. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button below the video to make sure you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you do click that subscribe button, make sure to leave me a comment below saying you subscribed and I promise to personally respond to your comment. All right, you guys, let's not delay any further. Let's jump right into the content. All right, so here is our ex slowly expanding dividend aristocrat spreadsheet where we're going to eventually have all of the dividend aristocrats in here to see how they perform historically. I ran out of time for this this one, but what I want to do in the next video is I want to alter one of the time periods to line up perfectly with the Dividend Aristocrats ETF, Noble, N-O-B-L, to make sure that we can look at how each one of these dividend stocks performs as a part of the whole dividend ETF. The only one that actually tracks the Dividend Aristocrats um, index. So make sure and be on the lookout for that in future videos as we add more stocks to this spreadsheet. Again, as always, we've got our for, uh, two different time frames. Right, right now we've got 33 year look back from uh, August of 88 to August of 2021. And then if we zoom over here, we've got 11 years, which is eventually gonna be um, a nine year look back from 2013 in future videos. And then we've got four different investing strategies. We've got monthly contributions, not reinvesting any dividends, then monthly contributions, reinvesting dividends, a lump sum investment where we're not reinvesting any dividends and not contributing. And then right here, we've got the lump sum investment while reinvesting dividends and making monthly contributions contributions. Here's our contributions right here. We're going with 250 a month, an annual cost of living adjustment to that monthly contribution of 2%, which we can adjust, and our lump sum investment of $100,000. As a quick reminder, as part of the Patreon community, you can get access to all of my dividend spreadsheets that I put out on my videos, as well as additional dividend content, all of the moves that I make in my own portfolio the exact same day that I make them, and access to the monthly dividend stock spreadsheet that tracks all of the dividend stocks that have been raising their dividends for at least five consecutive years. If you'd like more information about that, hit the link in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and reveal some data here. We've got just our five companies and then we'll expand it out to all 16. We're gonna start here with monthly contributions, not reinvesting any dividends. All right, here's the data here. We're looking at trailing 12 months of dividends and overall portfolio value. Trailing 12 months of dividends, by the way, is in that 33rd year, how much was received in dividends for the past 12 months. Top performance here with respect to dividends would be Walgreens Boots Alliance at 17,000 a year. And then we've got 17,430 here with the Clorox company. Third place is PepsiCo at 14,000 and then both Kimberly Clark and Coca-Cola are at 11,000 each. And then based on portfolio value, if we search here, go search largest to smallest, we've got top performer here is the Clorox company at 704, 578, followed by Pepsi at 548, Walgreens Boots Alliance only 444, Coca-Cola worth 400, and Kimberly Clark worth 366. If we reinvest those dividends, let's see if the results change at all. All right, if we sort by trailing 12 months of dividends, we can see here top performer would be the Clorox company still at 32,359, followed by Walgreens Boots Alliance, PepsiCo, Kimberly Clark, and Coca-Cola. You can see here we almost doubled the dividends from Coca-Cola here with the Clorox company over those 33 years. And then if we sort by portfolio value, we can see here top result is Clorox at 1.32 million, followed by Pepsi at 978. 
Kimberly Clark at 716, Coca Cola, and then Walgreens Boots Alliance. Let's see how things change though when we don't do monthly contributions, we instead only invest a lump sum of money at the very beginning of the period and see what happens. And remember, our lump sum here is $100,000. Top performer in trailing 12 months of dividends would be Walgreens Boots Alliance, worth $2.6 million. Top performer here for dividends would be Walgreens Boots Alliance at $103,000 a year in dividends, followed by Pepsi and Coca Cola at 69 and 66, then Clorox at 58, and then Kimberly Clark at 32. If we do it based on portfolio value, of course, we're at Pepsi at 2.6 million, Walgreens Boots Alliance at 2.61 million, 2.3 for Clorox, 2.2 for Coca-Cola, and Wah, wah, wah. Kimberly Clark at only $991,000. Now, let's say we do that lump sum investment and we make monthly contributions. All right, trailing 12 months of dividends, still Walgreens Boots Alliance at 129, followed by Pepsi at 94, Clorox at 90, then we got 86,000 for Coca-Cola Company, and then Kimberly Clark would only have 55,000 in dividends. If we do it based on portfolio value, again, what we're talking about here is we're doing a lump sum investment at the beginning of the period back in 1988 of $100,000, and then making monthly contributions 250 a month, and then increasing it with the cost of living adjustment every year. 3.66 million for Clorox, 3.60 for Pepsi, Walgreens Boots Alliance at 3.28, and then Coca-Cola at 2.98, and then way back here in the back, Kimberly Clark, which was doubled by almost three of the companies at 3.2, 3.6, and 3.66. In previous videos, we found that some companies performed well over the 33 years and the 11 and were top performers. Others, we found, performed really well over 33 years, but when we looked at just the past 11 years, they didn't perform as well. Let's see what happens with these five companies. All right, we're look, first looking at monthly contributions, not reinvesting any dividends. Top performer here with respect to trailing 12 months of dividends would be Pepsi at 1.65 million. Second place goes to Kimberly Clark, that company that was performing last in the 33 year look back is in second place here based on trailing 12 months of dividends at 1,645 a year. Then we've got Clorox, then Coca-Cola and Walgreens Boots Alliance. If we reinvest those dividends, let's see if it changes our results here. Top result here, Kimberly Clark at $2,000 in trailing 12 months of dividends after those after that 11 year period, followed by Pepsi at 1984, Clorox at 1927, Coca-Cola at 1799, and Walgreens Boots Alliance at 1517. Portfolio value here, if we search here, we've got top result Clorox at 80,000, followed by Pepsi at 78, Coca-Cola at 65, Kimberly Clark at 64,000 and Walgreens Boots Alliance at $41,000. And while Kimberly Clark performed well with respect to dividends, their overall portfolio value was not as high. Let's take a look at that lump sum investment, not making any monthly contributions and see if this changes who's in first place. We've got top result here based on dividends is Kimberly Clark Corporation, 77.62 in dividends, followed by 75.88 with Clorox. Then we've got Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and Walgreens Boots Alliance bringing up the rear. If we look at portfolio value, let's see how that changes things. Top result is Clorox. Second place is Pepsi. Uh, third place is Kimberly Clark at 238. Coca-Cola is at 210 and Walgreens Boots Alliance at 130. Very interesting to see how lump sum investment changes things. Kimberly Clark performs a little bit better with respect to portfolio value and trailing 12 months of dividends. One thing to note here, each of these companies is worth more than what we started with $100,000, but we can make the case here that, man, with Walgreens Boots Alliance, they're only worth 130, whereas, you know, Clorox almost tripled their value. All right, and lastly here with lump sum investments with monthly contributions, top performer here, Kimberly Clark with 9,773 in trailing 12 months of dividends, followed by Clorox, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and Walgreens Boots Alliance. If we sort it based on portfolio value, we've got top result here, Clorox at 3D6, followed by Pepsi at 341, Kimberly Clark at 303, 275 for Coca-Cola and Walgreens Boots Alliance 172. Now you make a strong case here that Walgreens Boots Alliance performed much better over 33 years than over the past 11. In fact, the results are pretty staggering when you factor in both from dividends and with portfolio value, they really underperformed. And truth be told, I got Walgreens Boots Alliance in my own portfolio, um, which makes me, gives me a little bit of pause here with, with, you know, is it really a good fit for my portfolio? It's got a great yield. Right, um, And I'm not truly concerned about overall portfolio value. But with respect to dividends and cash flow, I want dividends that are increasing and growing. And honestly, I mean, 
you can make the case that Walgreens Boots Alliance just hasn't performed that well. All right, here are all of the different stocks here, all 16 that have made it in to our spreadsheet so far. If we highlight the ones we just reviewed in yellow and see how they perform overall, let's take a look here at this result here. We can see that they're kind of middle of the row, although Clorox has performed really well over the 33 year look back based on trailing 12 months of dividends if we do it based on portfolio value. Clorox company is right there. If we look at reinvesting our dividends based on dividends first, we can see here that uh, Clorox didn't even break the top five, but it was the top performer. Coca-Cola ended up being the worst performer here over those 33 years. If we look at portfolio value, of course, we can see we've got Clorox and Pepsi that performed relatively well amongst the 16, as well as Coca-Cola and Walgreens performing, or actually underperforming. If we look at lump sum investment based on dividends, we've got Walgreens Boots Alliance performed second best here based on that lump sum. Portfolio value, uh, we've got a few top performers here. Pepsi and Walgreens were near the top, followed by Coca-Cola and Clorox. Looking at lump sum plus monthly contributions based on dividends, Walgreens broke the top five just barely where the others were middle of the road. If we look at portfolio value, these all performed relatively well with respect to portfolio value, but not in the top three. Coming over here to our 11 year look back, if we sort based on trailing 12 months of dividends, nowhere near the top here for these here. Pepsi was middle of the road and everything else was down below. Walgreens was the worst performer here based on dividends. If we're looking at portfolio value, Walgreens was near the bottom here, follow up and Clorox and Pepsi were relatively strong performers amongst the 16. We reinvest those dividends. We are still kind of middle of the row, not near the top. And if we look at portfolio value, we can see here that Clorox and Pepsi are performing relatively well. Looking at that 11 year look back for lump sum investments based on trailing 12 months of dividends, we are kind of middle of the row here. Portfolio value, still kind of middle of the row, Clorox and Pepsi performed relatively well. And if we scroll over here to the uh, lump sum plus monthly contribution, still kind of middle of the row with Walgreens bringing up the rear for all 16 and portfolio value. Top performers here again, Clorox and Pepsi, but nowhere near as high as Lowe's, Target, McDonald's, and Genuine Parts, which we reviewed in the last video. All right guys, let's take a look at our charts here to finish everything up here. I know there's a ton of data here and it's hard to see the top performers. It would take a long time for me to filter out just the five, which you can see here for the most part, almost all the companies are right down in here. I don't even think, I think Clorox made the top here closely with respect to any of these companies. We still got top performers with lows. Same thing here with monthly contributions, not reinvesting those dividends. Uh, everything's kind of middle of the row followed by just lows, just taking away the top spot. This one I found fascinating because it broke out from our, what we expected to see here because we saw that you know, uh, Target, or excuse me, Lowe's was up here in the top, but this green line here was one of a, one of our companies from this video, Walgreens Boots Alliance, really outperformed for a while, and then just kind of has over, as you can see, over the past ten years, has not performed as well as the others. Again, we've got lump sum plus monthly contributions. We can see here that there, this is what happens with uh, Walgreens Boots Alliance if you reinvest those dividends and make monthly contributions with the lump sum investment. Here's our eleven year look back, where things are a little bit easier to see. We've got a lot of different colors here, I apologize. Um, the only company that was near the top here was Clorox right here. I think that Pepsi was around here. Here's Pepsi in the yellow line right here. These two lines right here. If we look at 11 years with reinvesting those dividends, still got um, Clorox right here and Pepsi that are very close together. But otherwise, everything's kind of middle of the road with respect to all these other companies. We scroll down here to lump sum investments, not reinvesting dividends. Still, everything is very packed right in here. I can't even fucking see everything. Let's see if I can zoom in even further here and look at these companies. We've got here, we've got McDonald's, then we've got Genuine Parts, there's Clorox, there is Pepsi, all very much lumped together. And then we scroll down even further. This is lump sum plus monthly reinvested dividends. We can see how they perform right here. Still kind of the same thing here with Clorox and Pepsi, kind of being middle of the road, but near the top. And then I added this here. I wasn't sure if this graph was gonna be worth looking at or not. These are all that this is total dividends paid based on monthly contributions, not reinvesting dividends. We can see here that the top company and I think this is the uh, yeah, the 11 year look back here. Just wanted to see a graph based on dividend payments or total dividends paid. You can see your top performer was still clearly uh, Altria 
Everything else is still very lumped together here. Some of the top performers though were People's Bank United and then we've got Pepsi I believe right here. Okay, so we've seen how these dividend stocks have performed historically, but that doesn't necessarily make them a great buy right now. Past performance is no indication of future potential, future earnings, future dividends, future anything. And just because you performed well over the past 33 years or the past 11 years does not make you a great dividend stock buy right now. Let's take a look at the metrics. All right, guys, so here are the five companies we just looked at. Coca-Cola, Clorox, PepsiCo, Kimberly Clark, and Walgreens Boots Alliance. Some of the things I like to look at are dividend yield, dividend growth rates, as well as the dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow. So let's go ahead and take a look at those metrics right now. We can see here, based on yield, we've got a few good performers here. I personally own dividend stocks in my portfolio that are yielding at least 3%, if not 4 or 5%, with the exception being of the dividend ETF that I have in my portfolio, Schwab's uh, SCHD, which is yielding a little bit less than 3%. We've got Walgreens Boots Alliance here at 4.03% current dividend yield, followed by Kimberly Clark at 34 Coca-Cola at 2.97, Clorox at 2.81, and Pepsi at 2.79%. I actually used to have Pepsi in my portfolio, and I currently do have, for full disclosure, I have Walgreens Boots Alliance in the portfolio. So from a yield perspective, these companies would meet my metrics, although they just, right now, they're not in my portfolio. If we look at the dividend growth rates, this is important, guys, because this reflects how much the dividend is growing every single year. We've got the one-year growth rate, three-year, and five-year. Now, I give a little bit of leniency for the one-year because we just passed through COVID or we're still kind of dealing with COVID, but the dividend growth rates were really impacted. And so I'm, I'm going to give people a pass or companies on a pass at least in one year if it's a little bit lower. And we do see that with most of these companies, a little bit lower. So with respect to three and five years, uh, these dividend growth rates are 5%. That's pretty good. I like to personally own between five and 10% um, dividend growth rates over those one, three, and five years. Um, so these are not bad here for Walgreens Boots Alliance. We've also got Clorox and Pepsi with pretty good dividend growth rates. A Little bit low here for Kimberly Clark and Coca-Cola. I do wanna always make sure that my dividend growth rate is at least exceeding inflation. Uh, and these really kind of do, although it's a little bit lower here, 2.98. I would say that historical inflation rates are between two and 3% long-term. All these companies here are really close to becoming dividend kings. Actually, we've got Coca-Cola at 59 years. These companies here, we've got 49, 49, 44, and 46, all very strong dividend payment histories. If we come over here to the payout ratio based on free cash flow, here's the, the standard ratio is based on net income, where you take dividends paid divided by net income, and then dividends paid divided by free cash flow, I feel is a better metric to understand dividend safety because dividends are paid with cash, not with net income. And we wanna make sure that the actual cash coming into the company is sufficient to not only you know, pay expenses, but also have actual cash available to pay a dividend rather than having to borrow money to do so. So if we're looking here based on these five companies and, and our payout ratios, we can see that Walgreens Boots Alliance is high with respect to net income, the standard ratio, but if we look at the actual cash flows, a very reasonable payout ratio. Same thing goes for Coca-Cola and Clorox. Pepsi is a little bit high, but they keep that pretty consistent, that number, so it's it's okay for me as long as it stays below 85%. Otherwise, it's a little bit unhealthy or unsafe for me. Kimberly Clark here, we're exceeding 100% here. That would be a warning sign for me. So if we look at all these metrics here, for me personally, like I said, I do own Walgreens Boots Alliance in my portfolio right now, but as far as owning the other four, honestly, this would be a no-go for me. Kimberly Clark would be a no-go based on their payout ratio being exceeding 100%. And based on the other three here, I might consider owning Coca-Cola in the future, although their yield is just so low, it doesn't meet my current priorities. Personally, I believe if you're truly a dividend cash flow investor, right? You're looking for cash flow rather than just maybe being an overall investor or a value investor where you're looking for companies at low prices. You know, nothing wrong with that, but if you're calling yourself a dividend investor, you gotta get some reasonable dividend yields. You shouldn't be actively, personal opinion here, right? You shouldn't be actively buying companies that are yielding one or 2%. So as a result, when we factor in these five companies, I'm not buying any of them except for the fact that I own Walgreens Boots Alliance and it makes up about three to four percent of my portfolio. Hopefully you found some value from this video guys. Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. We will add more dividend aristocrats to this spreadsheet next week and so I want to know which five you want to hear from guys. We're going to cover them all but which ones do you want to see specifically in the next video. So make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about this video and what other content and topics you want to see more about on the channel. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day, and please continue to stay healthy, both physically and financially. Have a good one.